It begins. Journey to the center of the ape. You can pry my gun from my cold, dead hands. That's not from these movies, is it? Uh, I just know Charles <laughs> said it originally. I don't even think it's a movie quote. I think it's literally <laughs> just him preaching for the NRA. Yeah, he was giving a speech for the NRA. Today, we're going to watch the complete works of Charles Heston. <laughs> We're not going to watch Planet of the Apes. We just have a mega cut of every speaking moment that Charles Heston has on film. <laughs> Old Char- Charlie Hests. This is going to take a long time. Should we start? We're in the three second mark. Yeah, so I press play. Or do I move to the three second mark? That's the ten second mark. I guess it skips. Ten second mark is fine. We'll just... Let's see. Ten second mark. We're on the ten second mark, folks. If you'd like to watch the nineteen sixty eight original Planet of the Apes, and we're gonna watch the whole original franchise in one sitting because this is now. Tradition. Heat, heat death. Trad heat death. Oh boy. Going back in time. So, if you'd like to watch along, press play on three, yep. a one, a two, a three. I feel like I shouldn't move the mic. This is the same year as 2001, isn't it? It is. My high school IT teacher, I had an IT teacher in high school, was an extra in 2001, Mr. Butler. I don't remember his first name. Yeah, you told me. I, I want. I really want to know if he was one of the apes in the beginning, because there's not very many like human roles in that movie. I'm sure we probably look it up on IMDb very easily. I like that he can just smoke a cigar in his spaceship. They couldn't even imagine a world where you couldn't smoke wherever you want at this you point. Can, you can pry my cold dead cigar out of my cold dead hands okay we will (laughs) we're not gonna bury you with it he looks a bit funny he's kind of a skeletal a skeletor type I just I watched Touch of Evil for the first time just like a couple weeks ago and I was I was kind of shocked when I realized it was him. I haven't seen that in a very long time. He, I guess, according to today's social mores, controversially played a Hispanic man. Yeah. But I I didn't see any problem with his performance in that. Like, it's not like he's doing, like, stereotype shit. He's just like a guy. I mean, yeah, they probably put they put some bronzer on him and whatever, but... I still think that Robert Downey Jr. doing blackface is one of the most genius uh, cinematograph- cine- cinema- cinematographic moments in history. Yeah, I remember, like, laughing real hard at that movie. Tropic Thunder's hilarious. Look at all those sleeping guys. Just sleeping. Where's the woman, though? Was that a woman up there? Oh, audience, I've never seen any of these movies. Oh, there's the woman. You've seen them all, Jason? Yeah, I think I've seen them more than once, but the last time I watched them, I was like in the single digits, Mm. age-wise. So it's it's been a while. Because they used to get like 
replayed on Disney Channel. I was one of those lucky brats with Disney Channel growing up. And um, I thought they'd get replayed on Disney Channel, but they'd always be sandwiched in between the movie Cocoon. Do you know the movie Cocoon? I know of it. I've never seen it, though. And uh, the uh, d- the David Lynch classic, Dune. So somehow in my head, I get them all like mixed up together. <laughs> it's an interesting combo of movies. I'm still kind of excited for the new Dune movie. Probably more than I should be. Honestly, in my head, I feel like these movies are better than what we normally watch on the podcast. These oh. Planet of the Apes movies. I could be wrong, though. I mean, this original one probably is better than any Fast and Furious movie, I'm going to guess. And I mean, the Transformers movies all are like the worst movies in, yeah, I mean, in I history. Would, Fast and Furious movies are much, much better than Transformers, in my opinion. And Jurassic Park... Well, first Jurassic Park's good. Yeah. Music's good. <clears throat> This sounds like the music I wake up to. It is such a novelty to see credits in the beginning of films, which is just not done anymore. It's not. Speaking of other new movies coming out soon, I'm really excited that Green Knight should be out soon. Uh, Yeah, the A24 movie. Yeah, I was going to say the A24 movie. It was fantasy novel. I like fantasy movies. I like fantasy I want to live in a fantasy world. Oh, this movie was so fast. I feel like the only person who uses uh, credits in the first of movies now is Quentin Tarantino. He seems to do that. Oh, yeah. yeah, He still does do that, doesn't he? I don't even notice because his movies are so fucking good. (sighs) But he still has end credits. Like, I mean... I wonder if I kind of want to figure figure out when end credits started because do all at, these movies still have end credits too, don't they have both? See, I'm thinking this one will, but like, um, damn, this is a crash landing. Yep. But like all these old movies I've been watching from like the '40s. They don't have end credits. Really? Yeah. I guess they, I never paid attention. They do everything up top, and then when the end comes, it's just the end, and it's over. It's so different from what we're, we're used to. This is actually way better um, cinematography than I was expecting. I always had the assumption that these movies were just like almost like B movies, like really, uh, these, really cheesy. These are classic, dude. Uh, I mean, they won awards and shit, right? I'll make that up. I feel like they won awards. This first one might. I mean, I guess we'll find out, but like, do the sequels get like. I'm not real Did sure. Did they get cheaper, do you think? Or? I think the first two sequels were really big, and then four and five are, like, much lower budget. I could be wrong about that, though. I mean, the apes look like crap, however. They yeah. <laughs> definitely just look like being in ape suits. Which well, which I, they still do in, um, in the Tim Burton one, too. The Tim Burton one, like, is working with much better sort of technology and whatever, but like I think it looks just as cheesy, but the plot is even worse from what I've heard. They all got beards. Guess they've been out for a while. Their chambers don't keep them from growing. <gasps> oh, damn. <laughs> The hell happened to Stuart? He, that shot right there. That must have been like a model, like miniature. Yeah, I think so. But it looked uh so it looked proportionate real, yeah. to the to the surroundings. 
I just wish they didn't use so much CG in these movies. I kind of wish I didn't know the big reveal of this movie. <laughs> I feel like it would be more more exciting. That they're on Earth. You know, I bet I bet this movie helped a little bit to um I don't know exactly the the chronology, but like both sixty eight. This is sixty eight, right? I think so. And so it was 2001. So, like, if people saw both those movies, like, relatively back back to back, you could totally see how the average moviegoer would be like, what is this ponderous Stanley Kubrick bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to go see Planet of the Apes again. <laughs> Things actually happen in this movie. <laughs> and I love 2001. I'm just thinking about, say, the average moviegoer in 1968. Last time I saw 2001 was in a planetarium. It was a cool place to watch 2001. That does sound cool. Bays Mountain Planetarium in Keensport, Tennessee. The first time I got my hands on LSD in high school, I uh, I pl- pl- planned it all out to just drop it by myself and watch 2001. <laughs> Which I did, and then I just slowly, like, I had that bad experience of realizing that you've gotten completely fake LSD. What was that, 3,972 year? God. This is like post-smartphones. Very much so. Surprised the world hasn't burned up yet. Man, we hadn't even landed on the moon yet. Think about that. People people checking out this movie. I mean, the space program was big, but... I we land... No, I guess we didn't land on the moon in 67. It was 69. 69. <laughs> Why was I thinking it was 67 for a second there? I don't know, man. You thought JFK was killed in 68 for some reason, too. <laughs> yeah, everyone knows he was killed in 88. <laughs> Right before we elected Ronald Reagan. I feel like I'm like yelling. <sighs> there we go. I think uh, I think my question about was that a miniature has been answered. It was not because they just showed them like crawling out of it. I think they really built that and put it into a lake or something. That background looks like a matte painting, though, maybe. Yeah, that background's a painting. It's got to be a painting. I kind of like that, though. You know what I mean? Like, it's almost... It looks like a movie, right? Yeah, but it's like... I don't know how to explain it, but those, like, background paintings look like a movie to me. Look yeah. Like a movie should be. Matte paintings are, are are have their place, for sure. And, like... CGI is like is impressive. Like you have to admit, I guess, but like it's just so re- over relied upon, and so much of it is bad. That like I don't know. I would actually say, coincidentally, an example of a movie that does CGI really well are the new Planet of the Apes movies. That's true. I actually really like those movies. Me too. I'm psyched for them. I, I fucking like teared up. Spoiler alert, when when Caesar died in the last one, I was like, we've been through so much with this character. Spoiler alert, <laughs> Caesar is in these movies too. Really? Yeah. Doesn't really make sense though, chronologically. Yeah, I mean, the the new ones are, are a reboot, so... I think I'm going to have to finally check out that Tim Burton version, though, after we watch all of these. I think it's on my computer. We'll st- might have to happen. <laughs> oh. I've heard it's like it's it's like a good, like good bad movie, more or less. Uh, I could see that. I just... Paul Giamatti plays uh, 
For me, Tim Burton's like one of those people who I wish he had just stopped because I do think that like his early films are really good. Oh yeah, like really good. He should have stopped a while ago. What was his last good movie? Pirates Caribbean, first one. I feel like that's a good blockbuster. He didn't make those movies. Didn't he make the first Pirates of the Caribbean? No. I just always associate him and Johnny Depp as just like being okay. Together. That's fair, but like that, I would have never thought that was Tim Burton. I don't know why I thought that first. I would one think was so much less of Tim Burton if he made those movies. The first one's good. That's what people say. <laughs> the rest of them were terrible, but the first one. No, he okay he hasn't really done like those kind of blockbuster films yet, but like I don't know. I haven't even seen a lot of his like latter day bad movies cuz they just look too bad. The last one I remember him like being I know he's made one since Big Fish, but that's the last one I really remember him making. He's made a bunch since then, but they're just all shit. Um I actually like his most recent movie I think that I like is was big eyes i didn't see it and people kept saying that was really shit too but it, i don't think it is at all i think it's a good movie i don't even know what it's about i know that big eyes is that famous artist person right is it about the artist it's about the artist but it's about how she got like taken advantage of by this swindler who said that he did all of her paintings and he got all the credit and stuff and it's the guy who plays that character is uh christoph waltz hmm. Who is always great in movies and uh oh what's her name the ma- the artist is played by I want to say Linda Cardellini she's pretty good the girl from Freaks and Geeks the kind of main character of that yeah, show yeah I remember her I think I had a crush on her at one point in my life uh, you better have everyone has. <laughs> <laughs> I just caught myself laughing right when he was laughing, and the subtitle said laughing. <laughs> was this laughing at the American flag? I should probably pay, try to pay a little more attention I, I was, to what's going I, I was on. I was trying to figure out what he's laughing at. There. I think he's laughing because his friend put that miniature American flag in the ground. He's like, what the fuck does it matter? We're trapped <laughs> on a fucking alien planet 300 light years away from Earth. Spoiler alert, though, they're on Earth. Remember when Michael Moore like tra- did, did that like gotcha interview with him in Bowling for Columbine? No. Did you see that movie? Yeah, I did. You don't remember I that? Don't remember the interview, that was like though. the big en- that was like his big climactic ending to the movie. I don't know why I don't remember. I but it was bad. It was like a lot even people at the time, even like liberals at the time were like, "Michael Moore, come on, man." Like cuz by that point Charlton Heston was fucking senile and so old and he's just like sir have you no shame working for the nra and just like holding up a picture of a girl who got shot and like leaving it in his driveway and like it's just all this fucking shitty michael moore tactics like it i think at the time i saw it i probably was like yeah take that old man but like when i thought about it later i was like michael moore is kind of a shithead I mean, I like Michael Moore, but yeah, he is kind of a shithead. It's okay to like someone who's also kind of a shithead. I mean, he's less of a shithead than Charles Heston. I just wish people would... I don't know. I guess I'm saying... I mean, yeah, Charles Heston is probably not a great guy. But uh, I've only recently actually really watched him in films, like Touch of Evil, and now this. I can't even think of another movie I've seen him in. I think he's a good actor, or he—I mean, for his time, he's in um, Ben Hur. Oh right, he's Ben. He's Ben Hur. <laughs> Which, uh, personally, I like that movie. Never saw it. I don't like the remake very much, though. Did not know there was a remake. Yeah, it came out in like 2010 or something. It's bad. Look at those styrofoam fake rocks. <laughs> oh, those are real, dude. <laughs> they sure move strangely <laughs> for heavy boulders. Are they running? No, but I gotta say so far, I'm impressed with the, the quality level of this movie. 
I I always just had the assumption that these movies were like kind of B movie would be too far, but like I just thought they were. I thought it was going to be cheesier, and like so far, it's looking pretty good. They're shorter than I expected. In my head, this, I remember them being like four hours long <laughs> each. That's the that's the beauty of childhood when you like something. It's almost the opposite of like you know time flies fast when you're having fun. Like when you're a kid, if something's really engaging, it almost seems like it goes on longer. Yeah. God damn it. Why does it have to reverse? That guy's looking almost like a like a George Clooney like third cousin or something. That's Clooney's father. (laughs) It's not Clooney's father. Clooney's father was an actor, though, right? Am I making that up? Or was he a weatherman? I think you might be making up the actor. No, George Clooney's father was a weatherman. No idea. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong, but I feel like George Clooney's father did something with the news. I don't know why I know this though. You know the guy. Oh, you know the guy from. Uh, he's in the original Twin Peaks too, but I guess you might remember more from the, the more from the third Twin Peaks. Um, like balding guy who's like, he's like second to Gordon Cole in the FBI. Can you, yeah. pi- can you picture who I'm talking about? Yeah. Miguel Ferreira. Yeah, I know who you're talking He's about. He's George Clooney's cousin. I had no clue. He died re- kind of like a couple of years ago. Charlton Heston's kind of a badass. <laughs> He's very much got that uh, Clint Eastwood vibe to him. Yeah, the cigar, the... You know, Clint the East- skeletal face. <laughs> Clint Eastwood's another uh, fucking bastard that I that I like in some in film. Yeah, I probably shouldn't admit that. No, but who cares? He directs some decent movies every now and then too. It's true that uh that boxing movie was actually really good. I can't remember his name. Million Dollar Something or Another. Baby. Was it Million Dollar Baby? I never never saw it. It was good. I mean, I haven't seen it since it came out. I think it won an Oscar or some shit, though. I remember yeah. liking it. Grand Trino kind of sucked, though. Never saw that one either. I've been, I have been. I think about watching it every time I see it on like a streaming service or something. It's because I want to see exactly how racist he is in it. <laughs> I mean, the thing with Grand Trino, I think the first time I watched it, I thought it was good, but the more I thought about it, the more I disliked it. It was one of those. I don't know if you've ever had those before where you watch something, yeah, that was fine. Then you start thinking about it, you're like, "Ah, I don't know if that was fine. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of me. That's like me reevaluating Michael Moore movies, basically. It's like, except with the exception of Roger and me, all of them don't really hold up that well, to be honest. What was I going to say, though? Oh, yeah, Richard Jewell. It's a good uh, Clint Eastwood movie. It's very... uh, It's like a 90s period piece, a 1996 period piece. Yeah. I I will always love uh, The Good, The Bad, The Ugly. I actually really like that movie. Fucking cliche, I guess, to like that movie. But it's a great western. I've just never seen any of those movies all the way through for whatever reason. I don't know why. I can't think. What's the name of that Western trilogy? The Good, Bad, the Ugly, and the other two that's names are suddenly slipping my mind because my brain oh, fucking doesn't work. I don't think it's an official name, but I think I know what you mean. Isn't it like the... I was going to say The Man Who Wasn't There. I was going to say The Man From Nowhere trilogy. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Dirty Harry is a movie I haven't seen since a fucking kid, but I feel like that movie has encouraged cops to be as fucking horrible as they are in the modern world. I guess the blueprint of it, from what I remember as a kid, just like Dirty Harry was basically the blueprint of every cop we have now. Yeah. I mean, I think, but I think that's a case of um, art imitating life, not the other way around. Yeah, probably. <laughs> 
I never saw those either. I just remember. Um, I forget sometimes that you didn't like. You weren't really like watching a ton of movies as a kid. I feel like I saw all these like movies because like mom just didn't care if I watched. It was, I just watched whatever she or her boyfriends were watching. Yeah, which were usually adult movies and not kid movies. Yeah, my parents were very uh, overprotective of my precious little Christian soul. <laughs> I was very much a latchkey kid <laughs> with like, I mean free reign to watch whatever I wanted. And we always had like, um, either through who my mom was dating at the time. Cause she always had different boyfriends or whatever, but she always had like, uh, we always had like the black box cable things, you know, like people used to hack the cable boxes to get all the channels. Yeah. Yeah. We always, we always had one of those. She had like a friend, I guess that was into like tech stuff. He'd always hack whatever the new cable box was. So like, you know, all the channels all the time. That sound, I would have I would have been uh, very jealous. All the Skinamax all the time. <laughs> all the Skinamax you could ever need. So that means you probably never went through the uh <laughs> the situation that probably every teenage every boy that was like going through puberty at that time trying to decode the naked woman in the in, scrambled in the lines. scrambled, yeah. <laughs> No, but I know about it. I feel like I've been privy to that. <laughs> Decode. <laughs> that makes it sound <laughs> even funnier. I remember one one like kid in the neighborhood. Oh damn. His name Skipper. That's intense. This is some like some fucking midsummer shit. Fucking biblical shit. <laughs> some biblical X Men shit. Oh, are the scarecrows? Oh, for a second I thought they were like. I thought they were like crucified people. I thought they were crucified apes at first. <laughs> Those backpacks look so uncomfortable to me. <laughs> they they look like. Okay. They look like styrofoam spray painted silver. <laughs> Why the hell would you carry metal backpacks? It's, just, it's got all their space essentials, man. Uh, but why metal? You ever carried around a metal bag? It sucks. It says someone who's never carried around. Yeah, a metal what are you bag. talking about? <laughs> <laughs> the hell with the scarecrows. Some reason Except that, they're fucking they're chimpanzee crows. Some reason that makes me want to explore the great Chicago horror series Candyman. Can we watch all the Candyman movies? Never saw any of those either. The, uh, the special thing about the Candyman movies is I mean they're stupid like 80s and 90s horror movies but they're all set in the ghetto of like uh, Chicago and they're basically like allegory for how shitty it is to grow up in the ghetto. Damn, I didn't know that. And, like, there is a monster, but it's really just supposed to represent all the shit of being, like, I don't know, low class. Oh, uh, I thought it was, I thought it was, like, a, like, an actual supernatural killer or something. Yeah, I mean, there is, like, a supernatural monster thing in it, but I think, like, it's supposed to represent, like, the shittiness of just, I don't know. I was just reading about, because they're coming out with a new Candyman movie, and I was just kind of reading about, like, the history behind how that franchise being more just, like, representing, like, the horrors of the Chicago ghetto more than the actual monster. Uh-huh. Which made me suddenly more interested in them, because those are also movies I haven't seen since I was a kid. I'm a little shocked they got away with rear male nudity in this era i think this was released in england to begin with like it was a british studio even though it was mostly american actors uh okay but i don't know that but it was like a big movie in the in the was. u.s maybe they cut this scene out i guess i've never been as he... skinny as any of these guys it makes me a bit sad <laughs> <laughs> Is he... that's not he... true i was briefly very skinny because i just got really sick and couldn't eat for like three months I ever tell you about that? Like my first year when I moved back to Korea and I was living in Daechi, 
I got like this like stupidly bad food poisoning while I was working at Ducks. It lasted for like two months. It got so bad that I was going to like the doctor every day before Ducks because I couldn't take off work. But I did get like the approval from the front desk to be like, yeah, anytime you need to leave class to go shit or throw up, that's fine. <laughs> oh, that's the mighty kind yeah. of them. And I was leaving class like 20 times. It, like, you know, in an hour long class, I'd leave like 20 times. I'd be like, blah, blah, like just suddenly like run out to go throw up in the bathroom and then come back. Sounds maybe. like absolute it was hell. Fucking hell. It got so bad that I was going to the doctor. The doctor's like, dude, if you don't get better, you're going to have to go back to America because we're like worried about you. Like, I thought I was dying for a bit, but I went from like. It's so insane they wouldn't give you time off. Give me time off. I went from weighing like 180 pounds to weighing like 139 pounds briefly. Damn. I was like bone thin. I don't think I've ever been that thin before. Like none of my clothes fucking fit. This is like fucking weird. Well, they found some medicine that fixed me. I don't know what I ate. I ate this like... <sighs> I went out to this like one of the raw crab places. I usually like to eat the raw crab. But I guess I got like a bad batch of like raw crab. Mm-hmm. I was just fucking so sick. Hope that never happens again. Listener, I hope that never happens to you. Unless you want to be skinny that was the only time in my life that i got to be truly skinny it wasn't sustainable though look at these peaceful humans doing their peaceful ah see i didn't even think they were going to be other people but they're just slaves, right? I mean, I guess we'll find out in a minute here. These are just like uncivilized wild animals, dude. I'm pretty sure I re- remember something about no, the apes enslaving these humans. They're slaves too, but I don't think these are like slave humans. I think these are literally just like nomads, wild, wild yeah. humans. <laughs> He's already figuring out which one he wants to fuck. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> that look on his face was fucking hilarious. She looks surprisingly well put together. Yeah, I was gonna say like these feral humans have like perfectly quaffed hair. And, like the one hot feral human, <laughs> no leg hair. Amazing. Really. I even saw. Look at some of the wigs, though. Some on, yeah. like some of the wigs are just too perfectly wiggy. Wonder where they filmed this. I'm sure I could find out and easily if I just your backyard took the time. Yeah. Those look like corn. Stalks. Those do look like corn stalks. That's what I was thinking. Maybe but it's they're not. To be like- Something else. I know my so, corn. Like, I know my corn. If you found yourself in this situation and all the nomadic people started running away from something, would you also run away? Holy shit! This is like the scene in Jurassic Park two in the field of the raptors. I wonder if this was an uh, inspiration for. Yeah, probably. Oh, are we finally going to see some apes. Uh, apes on horseback. In the uh, in the new the the reboot Planet of the Apes movies, even though those movies are very sort of like gritty and realistic compared to these, it still would always make me laugh a little bit inwardly when I'd see the apes riding horses. I don't yeah. know why it just looks so funny to me. <laughs> no, I feel like these are this movie's a little gritty in its own way. It is. I mean, like, considering that they didn't have, like, motion capture technology, this is probably the best you could do with this kind of story. Yeah. And even now, actually, after seeing the costumes, they're a lot better than I remember as a kid. Like, the Mm -hmm. ape costumes. Yes, they do like ape suits, but they look surprisingly good. I don't know what I mean. I think once they start talking, you're going to maybe take that back. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, it's not bad. I mean, even to go back to 2001, 
even those apes in the beginning look fucking yeah, obviously really fake do. and weird. <clears throat> I saw the the ori- one of the original ape costumes from two thousand one when I went to the Kubrick exhibit in Seoul. That was such a fucking thrilling exhibit for me. They had the original fucking Hell Nine Thousand, man. Oh, that's awesome! I got to like touch it. It was just right there on the wall, like not even protected by anything. And they had the the baby, the like you know the star child, whatever, like uh, model from the very you know final shot of the movie. It was awesome. Oh, why does the black guy always have to die first? Oh, did he? You know what's funny is we because we've been talking so much. It I didn't notice until the the swimming scene. I was like, oh shit, they're not all white. <laughs> oh yeah, that's come on, man. Let's get rid of the black actor this, as soon as we can. This can't be the first time that's happened in a Hollywood movie, but. Because I always think of that as a cliche from, like, slasher films, you know? But I guess it, it's the same in other movies, too. Really? How does she shave her legs? <laughs> Why does she shave her legs? Because even feral humans like a smooth leg. That's true. <laughs> Wow, I didn't think Charles Heston would die so soon. <laughs> Shot in the neck. I just can't help wondering about all this production stuff. Like, did he do that stunt, do you think? He might have. Only... Yeah, that one didn't look too dangerous. Maybe not, though. But it sort of cut. Like, he fell in, and you could only see him from the back when he was falling, and then he came right back up out of the water, and it looked like a separate shot. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. I think people were way less concerned with that kind of shit back in these days, but because, you know, like, I don't know, like nowadays, like when Tom Cruise wants to do those insane stunts for Mission Impossible, they have to literally like waive his um, insurance because otherwise the movie studio won't let him do it. Yeah. But he's so insane that he's like, yeah, sure, whatever. Get rid of my insurance. I want to jump out of a helicopter without a parachute. I don't imagine many things make him feel. Except for those insane stunts. I really think he's that's the way he's gonna go out. Is like mission and mission and mission impossible thirty seven. He's gonna like finally do the stunt that kills him. Yeah, you're right. The talking's bad. But really, like they couldn't there's no way they could do better than that at this point in film history. I mean, without, like, even if they had some sort of, like, robotic, like, moving mouths, like, that would look just as dumb, probably. That's true. But, yeah, I don't know if you've ever watched the, there's the hot feral lady. Looks a bit like my ex. It's actually not that bad. It's still bad. <laughs> the talking. So the mouths are puppets? You say she looks like your ex? Yeah, the hot one. <laughs> so is your 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 pickup line like Hey, were you in Planet of the Apes? (laughs) Totally, man. It's actually my pickup line with everyone, though. (laughs) You really look like you could be related to Charlton Heston. (laughs) (laughs) You look like one of the horses in Planet of the Apes. Isn't that how you pick up chicks? Mm Mm-hmm. I can't hear the name Dr. Zaius without thinking of the the Planet of the Apes musical song from The Simpsons. <laughs> Actually, I've had that song in my head, like, just constantly. I haven't thought about that song in a while. Well, 
I already decided the title for our whatever you know if we get if we're gonna talk about the uh, these movies separately for an episode, which is Chimpan A to t- to Chimpan Z, <laughs> which is the line from that. But yeah, like all all this morning, I've just had that song in my head. I get it in my in my head all the time. Anyway, it's amazing that the apes speak English. Well, spoiler alert, we know where they've been all along. They're not actually on an ape planet. But why English? The dominant global language still, I guess, besides Chinese. (laughs) Maybe the other apes, and, and presumably they've landed in North America again, I think. That's true. He can talk. He can talk. Jesus, I'm going to have this bright eyes. <laughs> Wait, why can't he talk? What did I miss? Because it's because he got shot in the throat. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Zayas. Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas. It's so catchy. That might be one of the top ten Simpsons moments. And there's a lot of good Simpsons moments to think about. But I didn't know they called him Bright Eyes. That's hilarious. <laughs> Connor Oberst always says that he came up with that name because it was from like some old like noir movie or something, I think. But I bet it. I mean, he just doesn't want to admit that it's because he's a big ape's head. <laughs> what if that's the whole time Bright Eyes has been named after Charlton Heston in these movies? <laughs> Doubt that's why, but it could be. <laughs> It'd be funny. <laughs> I think Paul Giamatti plays Dr. Zayas in the uh in the new ones. In, yeah, in the in the Tim Burton one. Not not the not the good new ones, the shitty one. That that shitty Tim Burton one, like uh cost like an insane amount of money too. And just Came like out in two thousand one. It's a total flop. That's a year of like good movies also, I think. Mm. Maybe two thousand two yeah. is better. Had to compete with Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings. How can you compete with that? 2001? Or is that 2002? I don't know. I think it's 2002, actually. Dr. Zira, this is the one that he kisses, right? I think so. (laughs) A present. I've got a present for you. A blank-eyed 1960s fashion model. (laughs) Yay, what I've always wanted. Oh, and she doesn't talk because she's just feral. Yeah. But he's going to shock the doctor by, you know... Oh, my God. Look at that facial expression. It's fucking eerie. I want to watch animals fuck. (laughs) That's what that facial expression is. Yeah. He 
can talk. He can talk. I can sing. I mean, it's smart of the people who wrote the movie to have him shot. In the I was just like, thinking the same thing. Like, convenient neck shot. <laughs> I guess that happens in the book, too. Yeah, this, I didn't know this was based off a book till I looked it up recently. Book. Maybe I should maybe I should read the book at some point. Oh, what cute kissing. <laughs> no tongue or anything. Cornelius. Isn't there Cornelius in the new ones? I think so. In that last new one, there was that really strange ape they find that it, that can speak English really well. Remember? I forget his name. Maybe that's Quir- I don't know. <laughs> They're not looking at him writing words, just ignoring it. Look at this stupid small. <laughs> She's covering it up. What did he write? He wrote, I can write. Oh, okay. <laughs> That kind of um, percussion sound. It's like is, in a lot of movies. Yeah, it, well, it, it also just reminded me of the Twilight Zone. Yeah, I can see that. Like especially in the beginning, the begin very the opening credits music was very. Oh, he's Twilight doing Zone. Why were the humans covering up the language, though? Maybe they're not as dumb as they seem. Maybe they just know better than showing off their intelligence to their masters. Yeah, because then they get, what, beaten to death? Yeah. Oh, damn. Cover it up, Zeus. Why would he do that? Because... Is he racist? Is there like a, a race thing to this movie? <laughs> I think there's a little bit of a allegory going on. <laughs> also, it seems to me, whether it was intentional or not, definitely a sort of like animal rights angle to these movies but i think it could just be incidental no i think there is an animal rights thing to the movies but like i mean like even nowadays like animal rights is like barely can is still considered like loony by like the main like a lot of people At least, like, I don't know, like, veganism or How does or she not notice <laughs> that he's riding? Because she doesn't think it's possible, so she just doesn't expect it, I guess. Oh, he just wrote on that. <gasps> he can write, he can write. I can sing... <laughs> At least she's a kind-hearted ape. I can't stop hearing the fucking <laughs> Simpsons song, song in my head. It's so funny. <laughs> Especially just since it's Phil Hartman's voice doing all the the great lines. Ha <laughs> 
<laughs> this is a trick. Five or six pages of writing. You just can't write. <laughs> Nonsense. That seems, that talking was especially bad. Seems like a seems like a bad uh, answer in this situation. And it's because he. Th- oh yeah, because as far as he knows, he's on an eight planet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He'd just be like Earth, <laughs> Earth, or school. <laughs> so wait hang on they think that he's just li- <laughs> that's funny they think he's he's just like crazy by saying you fell out of the sky or whatever first time they've seen a paper airplane what is this impossible technology you never thought of making a paper airplane Oh, is this where he realizes it's Earth? (laughs) No. (laughs) He sees a map. He's like, oh my God. It was Earth. Damn you. It just cuts right to the ending (laughs) scene. Forbidden zone. Forbidden zone is a weird B movie. I think it's called Forbidden Zone. Yeah. Do you know that movie? I've heard of that movie. I haven't seen it. It's um. Danny Elfman has a role as a weird cameo in it. He's from that band. He played. Well, he's from Oingo Boingo, but he's also like he's done like every Tim Burton. Yeah, um, he's from that band. He's not famous for anything else. <laughs> but he he plays Satan in this this weird ass movie this uh, called Forbidden Zone. Uh, I don't know if that movie's worth watching. I just remember <laughs> watching it when I was like really high or whatever with friends and it was pretty funny (laughs) (laughs) so wait how many years is supposed to have passed when they (laughs) went when they went into like hypersleep it would have had to been like Hundreds of thousands of years, no, at least. I mean, right as their spaceship was seeking, it showed the date, and it was like 3,792, so like 2,000, 3,000 years has passed. That's way too short. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I mean, I guess I don't know. I mean, obviously I know what the big reveal is at the end of this movie, but I don't really know what this is supposed to have happened to humanity in that time. Like, was it like nuclear war or? I think it was nuclear war, but I don't remember if it was nuclear war or climate disaster. Because then I guess like if apes just rapidly evolved all this intelligence, uh... I guess they would have no memory of the way humans used to be, I guess. <laughs> would it take less time for them to evolve the intelligence it took us? I mean, if suddenly they were, I don't know, 
Yeah, way less time. <laughs> it was like early hominids were like 200,000 years ago. Yeah. I mean, what it's best to I think it's best to think of these movies as like as like movie length Twilight Zone episodes. Yeah. So the doctor's the conservative ape, hates the future. He's also just so obsessed with his own uh, scientific Great. theories that he doesn't want anything to. Uh, he's being a bad scientist because he's not following the evidence. He's trying to force the evidence to conform to his hypothesis. Yeah. Now they're like totally pair bonded. <laughs> you filthy animals. <laughs> it's a menacing ape. <laughs> be really funny if in the fight he just ripped off the mask like the the ape mask it's just amazing how weak the apes have become yeah in, in a normal situation where I, is their ape like strength because well, i i know apes are quite a bit stronger than humans yeah uh, especially chimpanzees but i was just gonna say well, actually i mean apes are stronger than chimps Huh? Apes are stronger than chimps. They're much bigger than chimps. Apes are <laughs> apes are many different kinds. We're apes, man. <laughs> oh, sorry. You know, I was <laughs> conflating apes with gorillas. <laughs> <laughs> you know, ape sounds just like gorilla. <laughs> Whatever. Gorillas are very strong, of course, but um They'll like pummel things to death, but like chimpanzees are like way crazier violent. Like they'll rip off your fucking face and your genitals and stuff. Like their upper body strength is insane. <laughs> like I think I would honestly, if I had to fight any an ape. I would rather take my chances with a gorilla than a full-grown chimpanzee. Hmm. I mean, that like remember that lady who got her face ripped off? I do. Yeah, like that was a chimp. Like they're fucking vicious. I mean, I wouldn't want to fight either of them, to be quite honest. Well, of course, I'm saying if I had to choose, I don't want to fight wild animals. I'm afraid of fucking like dogs. I would, I would rather be pummeled to death by a gorilla than like ripped limb from limb by a chimpanzee. Sure. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Not of which one I think I can beat, but which one will kill me in a it's less amazing. horrible this, way. Uh, he's not going to jump on the horse. I thought that he was going to jump on the horse. But what I'm wondering is, are these supposed to just be generic ape species? Because they don't look like chimpanzees. I think they're or... like a new ape species. Yeah, because they look like a mixture of like gorilla and chimpanzee, sort of. But like in the new Planet of the Apes movies... The majority of them are just chimpanzees. Yeah. Those movies fucking rule, man. I think they just get better, too, as they go mm. along. I mean, I think this one's pretty good. No, I'm I mean, watching it now, and it's better than... I mean, I remember liking it as a kid, but I actually think this is pretty decent. No, this is... I'm, I'm enjoying this a lot. I'm just... Uh, the new ones are great, though. I'm You're th right. I'm thinking about how the new ones have gotten progressively better and uh, there's going to be another one I'm pretty sure <clears throat> that last one I thought was really good with Woody, Woody Harrelson yeah Woody Harrelson was like the father just like seeking revenge yeah because you even kind of feel sorry for him at the end even though he's like you know a monster the ape killer I watched some of the, like, a little bit of the sort of behind-the-scenes stuff about how they, like, did all the motion capture of those movies, and it's fucking... That's the kind of CGI I'm really impressed by. Like, fucking Transformers CGI can fuck off. <laughs> yeah. 
that or just like I mean, of course I'm impressed by just like fully dedicated CGI stuff that say Pixar does, but it doesn't even count. That's just like computer animated. Yeah. Right? But when you that can when count. you can merge it with real cinematography in a good way, like those apes movies like Oh, is this his friend? Oh shit, that's fucked up. <laughs> Man, they just they're just attacking this guy's throat <laughs> all the time. Oh, is that Landon? No. Did I just make up Landon being there? I have a feeling the whole crew is basically done for besides him. But I don't know. They didn't show anyone else dying, right? Yeah, I mean, there's only Landon left. I can't remember if Landon's alive or not, because it's been too long since I've seen this movie. Oh, man, getting pelted with fruits. That has to suck. <laughs> God. Makes me want to eat some fruit, though. It's just so... It's. Just, <laughs> I feel like that's just the, the writer or the, or the director, whoever made that decision, just beat a little bit... A little like cl- too clever by half or something. Yeah, like have the apes pummel them with bananas and apples. <laughs> like, <laughs> there it is. There's one of the classic lines. Oh, and that's the first thing he says to them. Yeah. I love how they just keep rewarding him by putting him in this cage with this, like, fucking supermodel. (laughs) How do they know that she's desirable, though? I guess maybe they don't. They all look the same to them. (laughs) Like, why is she the reward? Maybe she doesn't look desirable. I mean, to the standard of... Those cavemen. Oh, it's nice that they have fire hoses. <laughs> it sucks to get hit with water that way. I guess he's not oh, going to see. I spoke anymore. too soon. They're taking her away from him. They know she's a a privilege. <laughs> now, now, now they're making classic ape noises. Damn you. <laughs> yeah, that I'm just I just got Neil Breen vibes there, or like uh, Tommy Wiseau. Yeah. <laughs> and look how. How quickly he's gone from screaming, it's a madhouse, to just, hey there, dame, <laughs> let's have a chat. What else are you going to do? I know, but just the transition yeah. was a little bit abrupt. <laughs> he is a fucking kind of odd looking person. He is. <laughs> She doesn't. <laughs> He's treating her the same way the fucking apes are treating him, though. Yep. Do you have a brain in there, sweetheart? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but I looked at the runtime of all these movies, and this is the longest one of the five. Really? Yeah. 
How long is this one? I thought it was only like 90 minutes. No, it's still short, but it's just a little bit longer than the other ones. Oh, yeah, it is short. This one's like like 100 minutes, yeah. 110 or something with see if there's an end credits or not. And the other ones are all like ex- like basically on the nose 90 minutes. <clears throat> He's about to be taught a lesson. Which means that the five Planet of the Apes movies are like still four hours total running time less than five Transformers movies put together. So if we found an intelligent creature, would we just kill it? Like Air Society? No, I don't think so. People or have capture pe- it. I mean the I mean, we're still horrible to animals, but we just we don't want to know about it. That's yeah, why everything. Depending it, on who found it first, I wonder what happened. Imagine if like government people found it first, they would just lock it up, study it, or kill it. Yeah, I mean, well, there definitely would be studies happening, but I don't know if they would necessarily be horrible. Be clever. Be quiet. I need to hear that more in my life. <laughs> Those chairs look uncomfortable. Yeah, they are just like a mix of like all the like great ape species. Yeah, I think so. Because there's like the orangutan mixture here. They seem to be like the high intellectuals, the high priests. Oh, I think at this point in our studies of apes that we were pretty sure orangutans were the smartest. Really? Monkey. I think so. Weren't we? I don't there's a know. Lot of, there was a point where everyone thought they were like the um, the ones that liked to solve puzzles the most or whatever. Oh, I didn't know that. I always thought chimps were just up there. Well, chimps are the smartest, like definitely. Um, bonobos. Bonobos. Bonobos turned out to be a lot worse than Miss Gladwell would have you believe. Huh? Is that their name? Jane, Jane Gladwell? Jane Goodwill? She was the famous like sociologist that did all the stuff. Uh, it's not, gl- not Gladwell. <laughs> What's her last name? Uh, Goodall. Goodall. Sorry. Yeah, she she was the chimp whisperer. I was bonobos because she thought they were like peaceful chimps, and so she wanted men to be more like bonobos. But then it turns out the bonobos are kind of like chimps. What? They fight. I didn't know that. They, yeah, they have violent tendencies, just like all other monkeys. Her, <laughs> first of all. It's time to get some woke language going. They're not monkeys, man. I'm monkeys sorry. are a totally different species. My bad. <laughs> monkeys are the ones with tails. Ah. If you don't have a tail, you're probably an ape. <laughs> I didn't know this. Yeah, we're apes. Really, technically. I've been thinking about making a movie called Planet of the Dolphins, where you someone crash lands on the Earth and there's intelligent dolphins. <laughs> there's an Upright Citizens Brigade sketch kind of like that. <laughs> I think I remember it. It's a pretty funny one, too. Dolphins uh, are awesome. You know dolphins hunt sharks for fun sometimes like they'll just get in a party together and just go and hunt and pick on sharks yeah they like pick on them they like bully sharks is he showing him his penis I had no idea they called him bright eyes all this time he's like do I look like Connor Obers to you motherfucker I'm Taylor Taylor Obers <laughs> <laughs> they they even have stupid religious people. <laughs> I mean, religious apes. <laughs> Whatever. Did the Bible survive this? They made their own ape Bible. It seems well, how like. about all of, like the books and shit that mankind left behind? I mean, they, these are the questions that probably poke a lot of holes in this movie. <laughs> I guess like nuclear destruction could solve some of that if it really did all just get incinerated. Yeah, but then how do these ape species carry on? I mean, I guess it's possible, but... Radiation just increased 
evolution. Maybe that's what the story is supposed to be, is that there was some like genetic mutation that like just caused all these ape species to like incestuously meld together. He can talk, he can talk. Seems like a dramatic part. <laughs> that, that seems fair. I want to argue with. Yeah, I want to argue rationally, <laughs> logically, with these fucking ape lawyers. <laughs> Tell me the uh, second book of the Bible, Joshua. <laughs> He knows nothing of our culture because he can't think. I mean, you're saying there's some like animal rights messaging in this, and I can see that, but I I think in a in a kind of a fucked up way, the the sort of the racial messaging is there too. Yeah, definitely. But it's just, I mean, I think I'm just, I'm slow to just say it because, like, you know, there's, like, a a, a long racial history of, like, referring to other races as, like, monkeys, apes, whatever. Um It's just so great how human their voices are and still. <laughs> I think some of the critique is also like in this movie is just the fact that people in power always refuse to listen. Even if something fucking obvious is right in front of their face. Yeah. It's also just about like yeah, scientists who don't follow the scientific method the right way. <laughs> oh, he is around. Is Landon that brain dead now? They probably lobotomized him. Yep, I fucking knew it. How dare you call me a baboon? I am a gorilla pansy. Even those wagons look like shit that fucking slavers actually would transport slaves in yeah. in, in real life. 
back in the uh, plantation days. Like, uh, I guess I'm just thinking of another movie, but I'm assuming the movie is kind of accurate in um, Django Unchained. Damn you all to hell. Sounds like a place you're not supposed to visit. <laughs> Oh, I guess there is stuff. Yeah, and that's why it's the Forbidden Zone. Oh, of course. Although, why wouldn't they just, like, destroy it all, I guess? But or, you know, study it. I'm saying they don't want people to know about it. So then instead of just destroying it, they're like, hey, nobody go over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the Forbidden Zone for a reason. It's dangerous. <laughs> what back. is your fascination with my... <laughs> With my <laughs> forbidden closet of secrets. <laughs> Don't step on any cords, Jason. Don't step on any cords. Gotta use the bathroom. Oh. You need a drink, Josh? Huh? Oh, I said you want a drink or anything, Waldo? Um, I'm okay. Scientific heresy. And I return. Damn. So you sentenced to scientific her for scientific heresy and something else, and now Zeus just gets to do whatever he wants to him, and he's telling him his his whole evil plan before he does it. That's good. He said first emasculation, which I assume means castration. He's just gonna chop off his junk. Makes sense. 
and then uh, take out the speech centers of his brain. <laughs> oh, yeah, they think flight is a scientific impossibility. A fort. <laughs> Oh, wait, yeah, I mixed that up. He wasn't charged with scientific heresy. Yeah. The Dr. Zero was, I guess. Oh, okay. But they didn't take her away. It was a weird scene. Like, all the judges or whatever just left, and then Cornelius and Zero were just, like, si like quietly holding hands together. But I think they're in trouble somehow. Where are my women? This is a clever, clever exchange there. <laughs> upside down civilization. Sure, you call it upside down because you're our lowest rung. I'm just thinking back to your favorite subject of how... <laughs> Of how leading leading men actors back in the day didn't have to be like super jacked. Heston definitely is not. <laughs> not, but also he's not in bad shape. But he just kind of looks like a normal. No, he just looks like he, there's. He probably never like worked out a day in his life. He just like. I mean, I think he does push ups. Like, like I mean, he's got like a developed chest and stuff, but he doesn't look like a monster. You know what I mean? He's like, I don't think he's like. I think he looks even more like sort of like an average man here than mm -hmm. say like Kevin Costner did in Waterworld. Yeah. I think he just to me it looks like someone who's probably goes for runs and does like push ups, probably like whatever you do in the military. I think mean, a lot of these movie stars though, man, even in the late sixties, definitely before that, like your Humphrey Bogarts and stuff, their exercise was smoking cigarettes and yeah. fucking drinking. <laughs> Like, yeah, sure, I lift things. I lift this drink to my mouth every day, boss. <laughs> I do think there's, like, ridiculous, like, body standards now. Oh, yeah. I mean... I, I've been wrapped up in it in some ties in my head. It's undeniable, but um, it's just funny to me how, like, the biggest sort of, like, sex symbols of the old Hollywood and, like, golden age of Hollywood were, like... Kind of average. Really average. Yeah. <laughs> Like, in terms, yeah, just body type, I guess. Like, if you, if you, like, if you just, like, brought back, like, Back to the Future style, like, a Chris Hemsworth or whatever, and put him into, like, an old noir movie, like, where would he even fit in, you know? <laughs> Be like, who is, what is this mutant doing here? <laughs> I mean... I, I guess it all started with, like, the 80s, right? Like, with Arnold and Sylvester Stallone. That's got to be the beginning of it. because, But, like, even in the 80s, like, I just watched the Escape movies, and, like, Kurt Russell is, like... Kurt Russell was he, jacked for his time. But he's not even really, I know. like... <laughs> not compared to, like... To me, Arnold's the original, like, jacked actor. Or maybe Sylvester. I would say Stallone from, like, the Rocky movies and stuff. Didn't they both kind of start at the same time? I feel like Conan came out at the same time as Rocky. Maybe it didn't. Maybe it was a bit I think later. Stallone was more of a household name before Arnold. Oh, yeah. But Arnold's whole thing was just... But young Stallone was still smaller than Arnold. Now I feel like Stallone's maybe bigger than Arnold. Small, but, like, frighteningly muscular. Yeah, Rocky. <laughs> 
I wouldn't want to. Maybe maybe movie. it all maybe it all t- goes back to the fucking Rocky movies because like even the '80s action stars like um like Van Damme and especially like Seagal Seagal was always like kind of just yeah. out of shape, just like sort of thinner out of shape, and then now he's just balloon man out of shape. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce Willis was kind of a big dude, but I but mean, he, not but like watched, big, big. Go back and watch Die Hard, man. He like he looks like he doesn't even have like arm muscles at all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think like, but but all of their sex appeal is just based more around like, well, so like an attitude and like I mean, obviously like their face and stuff. W- but what like, I'm saying, like Heston to me looks like he's in shape here. But I feel like his workout like consists of push ups and pull ups. And I think nowadays like the workouts really consist of just make your arms like super jacked. And like I don't think that was like the body thing then. And I don't even think like having super jacked arms means you're like in good shape. But I do think that's became like just the super jacked arms and chest became like so much bigger in our generation. And I yeah. don't necessarily mean I don't I mean Manly shit. It just never seemed like practical muscle to me. I'd much rather... I feel like you're probably in a lot better shape if you can do like 20 pull-ups than if you can... I don't know. I don't know what I mean, I'm all, to say. I mean, all of those guys, they do the same thing. They pay somebody. Yeah. <laughs> and he tells them, you eat like three chicken breasts a day with brown rice and then you, and then you work out seven hours a day you take your steroids god why do i ever get off of steroids <laughs> or hgh if you're like a oh, stallone testosterone they usually do cycles of all of it they'll do like test H- hgh and steroids <laughs> I mean, if I could easily get steroids, I would take steroids because I'm a fucking weirdo. Not necessarily to get jacked, just because I know they're really good at counteracting uh, aging. And aging scares me. Here we are on the Socialist Podcast where I admit that aging scares me and I would do steroids. But it's true. I would. I guess I didn't know that uh, anti-aging... Thing. I I would have guessed the opposite that they actually like fuck you up in the long run. No, they're really good for like I mean as long as they're controlled, they're good for anti aging because they keep your muscles at a uh, basically they keep your muscles repairing much longer like as you're aging especially because like generally one of the things that happens you age your muscles don't repair as well. But the thing that makes steroids make you like so good at getting strong is the fact that you um, they basically just keep your muscles repairing even when they don't need to be repairing. And that's why like you can like be taking steroids and basically not work out and still be getting muscle mass. Mm. Like doesn't it fuck up your, uh, reproductive. It does. It, it can cause problems, but the thing is, it's usually the problems from like taking too much or not dosing your cycles out. Well, like even if like, so I've read some interviews with Arnold he was pretty strict with it where he'd only do like one cycle a month. I think like a lot of it is like if you're under doctor supervision or if you just have people around you who know what they're doing. Yeah. They're probably not going to fuck you up. Yeah. Like um, it, it becomes a problem if you're just like, I want to get as jacked as possible. And just like you do way too much. That's when you get like the roid rages and yeah. whatever. It was that, it was that guy who fucking killed his whole family. One of the wrestlers, uh, ben, been, Chris Benoit. Right, right. That's sh- that shit's fucked up. Man, I love. <laughs> I actually love professional wrestling. I think it's amazing. Um, <laughs> hey, remember that wrestler who killed his little family? I love wrestling. <laughs> that's not why, but I. I, feel I like know it's just the way that it's. Uh, it's one of those like weird places where like the people. I, I feel like in wrestling, it's happened a lot, but almost any professional sport where like the owners um take advantage of the athletes way more than they should be, and I guess in wrestling, it's almost more performers. Because like, I always think of wrestlers more as like performers. Well, they are. They, they are athletes, but you know what I mean. They're athletic entertain like performers. Yeah, I mean. Not many get to be like The Rock, where they don't have to like fuck up their entire body for the rest of their life. Yeah, wrestlers like seem to have a very uh, short lifespan in general. Speaking of great movies, that uh, The Wrestler was a great movie. 
I don't know if you ever got around to watching it. I never saw it. Oh, you you would like that movie. It I was... mean, I like Aronofsky. I do too. And I I kind of I like I I like Mickey Rourke like in theory. <laughs> Um, I'm still sad that his Batman movie never got released, even though I'm actually <laughs> Mickey Rourke. No, no, Aronofsky. no Aronofsky. I'm still uh, hoping that. Um... Well, he was supposed to do what turned into the Dark Knight. Yeah. And then they said it, his idea was way too fucking weird and they took it away from him. I'm excited for the. Uh... The new Batman? Yeah, just because I like Patterson so much. Robert well, Patterson's do, fucking great. I mean, connecting to what we're watching right now, Matt Reeves directed the the reboot 2 yeah. and 3 of uh, Planet, Planet of the, the Apes. Apes. Yeah, I think it's going to be really good. Yeah, uh, I, saw, I saw the trailer. At first, I was kind of like, why are they using this sad Nirvana song in the trailer? <laughs> and oh, then, yeah, I was going to say I didn't say it, but now I remember saying it. Um. Well, no, I mean, as good as comic book movies can be, I'm I'm oddly not as sick of them as most people. But I think I'm 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 not done with. I'll probably watch all the fucking comic book movies now, just because it's it's like a thing to to be aware of what's going on in culture or something. But like, my thing is, I don't think they've. I'm saying uh, if I'm sick of any of them, it's probably the 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 Marvel formula. Yeah. But, but I guess they've like they've ended that whatever like uh third weight whatever like they have it like broken up into like yeah. uh yeah you know what i, I think mean they're, actually i've been watching loki and i think they're doing really interesting things with that show um oh yeah i heard about that it's, it's pretty good and he so reve- revealed to be bi or something well yeah he's bi in the comic so it wasn't really a surprise my main problem with like almost all comic franchises is that i feel like they're doing the most like generic comics which i guess is what gets the best audiences but there's so many great comics out there that i guess they don't touch because they'd be too weird but i keep thinking dc dc's movies have sucked because they've been trying to basically copy marvel but dc has some of the best like just like offbeat comics and i feel like if dc would just like not try to do like a big universe and they would just like pay good directors which they were trying to do in their world but pay good directors to do interesting comics they have that they could come up with something that was like completely different than what marvel's doing and also make a ton of money because they basically do what they did in comics where they had like dark or they had like um vertigo and uh not dark horse vertigo but they the more adult line where they instead dc's like you know instead of doing like shared universe capes we're just going to do our adult comics and have like good directors direct them and do these stories that resonate with people. But instead, they just want to do capes. And I guess there's more money in doing capes. Mm, yeah, but they've been like, they've but their movies have they, been bad. They've been consistently the butt of like the joke of of the you know in the in the arms race between Marvel and DC. Yeah. Um, it's not because their source material is bad. I swear there's really good DC. So- well, there's good Marvel source material too. But. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, I don't really, I don't really know comics anymore. I, I kind of did as when I was younger, but I know there's like millions of storylines in the comic book yeah. worlds of these major companies. See, I think the thing, but like they're, they're obviously trying to hit like the four quadrant, like audience thing, but like, yeah. That's why people are seem seem psyched about this new Batman, Batman film yeah. is that it looks like it doesn't give a shit about any of that. Well, I think that's what made. Um, Although I know with the Dark Knight movies they were trying to hit the four quadrants, but I think part of what made the Dark Knight movies good is that they. I don't think they did a lot of pandering with those movies. There were some, but. No, they it it. I don't think they did any of that sort of fanboy pandering shit really. I mean, Nolan has just made so many successful movies that he can do whatever he wants, that's true. and that's what he did with those movies, as far as I can tell. And I mean, at least the latter two. I mean, DC's biggest problem is they hired <laughs> Zack Snyder to run their universe, but their <laughs> their next biggest problem is I think Zack Snyder doesn't have any original ideals and he just wants to copy the Marvel formula, but he's fucking bad at it. And but he also wants to make it. Snyder fied, yeah, like, and, <laughs> which and, is a problem in its in itself. <laughs> and like, I don't hate the Marvel movies, but at the same time, I I think if you're trying to compete with a juggernaut like that, you don't copy them. 
I think you just have to. Yeah, I mean, to... my my understanding about that is that the reason they made uh, BVS was because they were in a huge rush to like tie all of these yeah, separate movies together, too. and um, although in a weird way, I'm kind of glad that they made like all those dumb movies because they're just they've made, they've given us so many hours of entertaining <laughs> podcast discussion. <laughs> he really is an ugly motherfucker, Charles Heston. I mean, <laughs> I look at him like, God damn, you're ugly. Like he doesn't a, he doesn't look quite as weird in Touch of Evil. Maybe because it's all in black and white. Maybe because he's wearing <laughs> clothes. Yeah, that too. Um, I feel like we're getting close to the big fa- famous scene yeah. here because we're on the beach. I know we talked over a lot of maybe... I don't think I just think we talked over character stuff. I guess I did kind of miss why why they're all here. <laughs> I think he's trying to show them to his ship. Oh, they're trying to find the ship? Okay. Because I, th- I, I was like, don't they want to like go to the Forbidden Zone? Or But no, they already know what's in the there. The ship was in the Forbidden Zone, too, though. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, because they crashed in the, the lake, yeah, not the they ocean. They had to walk through the Forbidden Zone. I also don't see why that the that woman is coming yeah. along with them. <laughs> I mean, maybe he's just like this is part of the deal. Or do you not want to bring her along with you? I'm just saying, why would they? <laughs> why would the ape overlords like make that happen? She doesn't know anything. <laughs> I think. Maybe I missed him demanding that she also has to come along in, with. In all honesty, she looks a bit better than my ex. <laughs> Just. Was that a doll? It is a doll. Oh, getting to the truth of humanity here. Impossible. Look at it. <laughs> Dr. Zayas' uh, body language there was really funny. He was like, huh, and shook his head like, impossible. Was also, character? what kind of skull is that supposed to be? <laughs> oh, you know, a man skull. <laughs> yeah, is that right? That's a very well preserved doll for uh, two thousand years. <laughs> God, that doll is so fucking creepy. You make a horror movie based on that doll. <laughs> Annabelle, Return of the Planet of the Apes. That's a whole franchise. Just make normal, normal movies set in the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> Planet of the Apes, but Chucky. Or just do a whole Planet of series, and it could just be a planet of different things. Planet of the Chuckies. Planet of the Hestons. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> I guess he was an astronaut. He should be smart. Just the look on Cornelius's face. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, he's got a lot of... 
It's a lot of uh, sass back <laughs> on Charlton Heston there. It speaks. It can talk. It can talk. I have a doll string. Mommy. <laughs> That's like all the proof he needs right there. She has a name. He gave all her right. a name. He gave her a name. <laughs> it just it just just hit me now. Where the fuck did they get all these firearms from? Did they are we supposed to believe that they created guns that are remarkably like uh yeah, human yeah, guns? Yeah, we are. <laughs> I mean, why is this guy trying to kill people or apes? This ape, I mean. <laughs> this soldier. Orders. Just oh. fall on orders. <laughs> the hero only needs one shot. That is canon. Oh my god. Oh my. Oh my. I just realized <laughs> Where they've been this whole movie is supposed to be, like, Manhattan, basically. Oh, really? <laughs> well, because the ending, right? The ending is the fucking Statue of Liberty. Oh, right. I forgot about that. <laughs> Doesn't look anything like the East Coast of the United States. I mean, climate change, dude. Yeah, I guess so. I guess climate change makes, like, giant rocky cliff sides pop up out of nowhere. <laughs> Although, I guess it's been 2,000 years. Who knows what could have happened, I guess. I think I'm going to have to get... I don't know where my phone is right now, but I'm gonna have to, I want to be able to pull up some, some IMDb facts. Okay. I'm going to get it for the next four movies. <laughs> I'm just curious where they filmed this. I mean, it seems tropical. It does. But you said this was like a, a, a British film company? I mean, I guess they could have filmed it anywhere. It doesn't matter what where the film company is from. Get your hands off me, you dirty ape. Dr. Zeus, Dr. Zeus. Oh, also, I really need to listen to that Simpsons uh, bit <laughs> between <laughs> movies. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny to me that they allowed him to just shave his beard off right before like the 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 uh third act of the movie yeah, I, know. <laughs> I didn't think about that well they showed him doing it too you know it was like the whole like point of like he's uh cleaning up for some reason i mean i guess he just wanted to shave I want to know more about the apes' theology. <laughs> I 
I wonder if they get into it in the later movies. <laughs> That's true, but so do you guys. <laughs> Oh man, that's kind of heavy. Ugh, that's feels feels like some. That seems true. It's one that was like chasing back into his jungle home. It just made me kind of remember a lot of disgusting white supremacist racism. Oh yeah. That's like the other day, uh, some TV show, uh, like this reality TV show I was watching, one of the people on the show was from South Africa, and he was like a white guy, and then this Australian woman told him, go back to Africa, and I was like, what? Say what? Like, like I wasn't really paying attention, and I just heard that phrase, and I was like, <laughs> What? And I was like, oh, I guess it's kind of okay, because he's really from South Africa, and he's he's white so, but yeah it was just like damn you don't really know what that means australian do you cornelius is the uh culture is the is the real progressive of of the apes progressive planet of the apes That's the other thing is, I wonder how old Charlton Heston is in real life here, because he looks like he could be 60. <laughs> like, He's not, though. No, of course not, but I'm saying, like, that's another thing about these, like, movie stars of the older days. Like, they all just look so much older than they really are. Probably because they didn't have all the steroids. And just, like, harder living, I guess. I don't know. I don't really actually know that Charlton Heston was, like, a big drinker or smoker or anything. Smoker. I don't know about drinking. But like um Humphrey Bogart was like forty five when he died. Yeah. And he looks like he looks like he could be like in his fifties when he's what movie was it? I think that I was watching The Big Sleep. Okay. And uh he says his age in that movie. He's like, I'm twenty eight years old, Jack. And I was like, Holy shit <laughs> You look like you're like sixty at least. Yeah, he looks like in his 40s in fucking Casablanca. In every movie, he looks like he's in his 40s, like even when he's not. He was the original Dreamboat, wasn't he? He was, but he's also like, it's weird to think about when you watch him in movies because he's got like this tiny, tiny, like shrunken little body. Um, But yeah, he was like the original fucking Hollywood fuck machine. <laughs> I was reading a bunch about him when I was watching all those older movies, and uh, he died. He died pretty, pretty like uh, painful, like cancer death. Um, they said like he was so like emaciated towards the end, like he was like ninety pounds, and like he just like looked like he was like shriveled up. Don't look for it, Taylor. You may not like what you find. I guess I'm saying Humphrey Bogart was like a small guy. Like all like all of those like sexy leading women that he was with were all like taller than him usually, it seemed like. You know who was a sexy fucking hunk though? Orson Welles. Young Orson Welles, sexy motherfucker. Yeah. You know, he out. always had like uh like a body image issues though and like weight issues like in like citizen kane he I like i knew that he went on like a crash diet for citizen kane and would wear like girdles and stuff oh, to shit, like i didn't know that yeah because like look at look at him in touch of evil man he's like 300 pounds and like 
I think I, I've asked you before. You've seen a third man though, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I fucking love that movie. It's one of my all but, time favorites. I mean that movie came out like Bef- no, not before Citizen Kane. I thought it did come out before. Maybe Citizen it was Kane. before. I think it is. It's a, it's close though. But um, yeah, he was always he always had like just a voracious like uh, appetite. appetite for everything, like food and drink and cigars and whatever. Oh, I can relate. But he actually ended up living like pretty long for considering all of that. I'm pretty rich. Yeah, but all the other like kind of guys from his generation, like Bo- Humphrey Bogart, for example, like just you Frank know, Frank Sinatra, for example. Sinatra lived to be really fucking old. You ride a horse? Huh? Can you ride a horse? Nah, I don't know. <laughs> just curious. I think I've I've been on a horse, but it was like very brief it was like like walking around in a circle or something oddly the only time i ever went to jeju i rode horses for a day it always seems like it would like be a literal pain in the ass it it scares (laughs) me i can ride a horse but for some reason i'm scared every time i'm on a horse because they're bigger than me and i know they're strong but i just feel kind of bad (laughs) (laughs) like making horses do stuff i don't know why um. Yeah. No, it just doesn't seem fun. I'd rather. Uh, I'd rather just. Uh, oh, it was ride my, a scooter or something. It wasn't my choice to ride horses in Jeju. I went to Jeju with uh, the first middle school I worked at. I rode. Uh, oh man, we're getting close to the big scene, aren't we? He recognizes this. What is that? I'm not sure, but he recognizes it. Oh, I know what this is. Yeah, I know what this is. <laughs> the size seems wrong. <laughs> it seems too small already. I've been to New York a few times. I stayed there for like two and a half months once. I've never once been to the Statue of Liberty. Wait, hang on. We were talking so much. Did they just like let them like was yeah. were they just like okay, go off on your own or like basically. You're free now? Not that he was free, but yes, basically. He's screaming at mankind here cuz we fucked it up. Yeah. Oh, that's why the size is off. I couldn't remember. I, I couldn't remember if it was tilted or it was just because like it was like fucking buried. It still looks a little small. Nah, <laughs> it's just because it's buried. It's a cool shot, though. It is. Wow. See, that's that's a good movie, man. That's yeah. just like it's a. Uh... Linda Harrison. Even these these end credits look weirdly modern with the uh I'm the all sure lower these, all lowercase character these movies names. will get worse over time, sadly. Probably, but that could also make it funnier. It's true. Cause I know I've I've heard some of the sequels are pretty good. That movie stood up much better than I expected it to, seeing that I hadn't seen it since a kid. And I was pretty into it the whole time. See, the end credits are different, yeah, but they, they are. are they are here. Oh, see, this end credits short. Although that might have just been the uh, totally legal version we're watching. Yeah. All right. Uh, so. You want to stop it for a second? Yeah. I, how has it been recording for almost two hours? I know that movie is not two hours it was long. Two hours. I checked the, the thing. Let's see. Oh, I guess it's close. It was. I think it was. I think I saw like an hour and fifteen yeah, minutes or something. Read that number. An hour and fifty-two minutes, I guess. All right. So yeah, time to stop this and begin the second movie.